Chinese people who are still, some of them are still really like working um, in, in, in African countries. And for them, it, it, it hasn't really affected them in, in any way. But for African people who cannot go to China, it, it does affect their, their market in, in, in China. And it, it's, it's not an, a balanced relationship. Good evening, everyone, and welcome tonight to the Africa Asia platform. Um, so Africa Asia platform is a platform where we speak about issues of Africa policy, Africa businesses, and Africa trade. So one of the topics that we speak about uh, several times is about China-Africa relations. It's been a while since we had one such discussion with uh, Patricia, who has been our ongoing guest in this topic. So we, I'm very excited to have her back. So tonight we just do like a roundup of China-Africa relations and recent happenings in that regard in the year 2021. Uh, we are at December 2021. So Patricia will let you introduce yourself and then uh, we can get started. Uh, you could just give the main highlights of things that you like noticed uh, that have been going on on China, Africa, you know, policies and interactions. I will ask questions here and there as we go along. Uh, but welcome, Patricia. Um, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Patricia, and yeah, I'm so happy to be back after a long time not being here with China, Africa, uh, China, Africa on China and Africa, I share and sharing my ideas. So like always, um, yeah, and it's always nice to share and to interact with Christine. And it's always nice to, <laughs> to, to be able to share uh, and, and pick her brain and to also see what's going on. And yeah, it's, it's, it's good. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> okay, cool, great, uh, Patricia. I think we can just go straight on to it. Uh, so I'll just ask you, like, what are some recent or areas of interest uh, on China-Africa relations? In the past, we've spoken about uh, Belt and Road Initiative. It's, we've spoken about, you know, digital, the digital economy and the digital landscape in China mm -hmm. versus Africa. Quite a bit that you've spoken about and different policies that China has been undertaking uh, across Africa, whether it's lending, mm -hmm. uh, the the China financing of different projects uh, in Africa. So what what really has been going on? So uh, actually, it has been a slow year, as you can imagine, with with COVID nineteen. Uh, it it has china has doubled back on on like really it's it's cooperation with on the at least on the trade and investment front it has been it has been quite covid has had widespread impact all over the world of course as in 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 the the economic sector so it has been quite quiet i would say and it's to be expected and we're just hoping next year it will be much, um, much more active. I think uh, we were discussing before this, before we started uh, this talk about um, about the borders, China's closing its borders and and not yet letting people into the country unless it's like really really important and and also those people who desperately need to go to china it's as it's really really expensive it's it's very very expensive on them so uh until china can let down on those restrictions and start open trading or openly letting business flow through travel i think then that is when it will become much more active but still covid has had its impact and um Maybe you can say there's just been the usual propaganda about the vaccines and China offering up vaccines. So that is probably a topic that can be 
heard in full detail about the propaganda and all the politicking about the vaccines because China has been trying to offer vaccination aid to Africa, but um, a lot there's there's just been a lot of politics about the vaccines. So people don't trust that the vaccine is is efficient as efficient as the Western vaccines. They don't trust that China is doing the vaccination aid for you know, cooperation or the benefit of Africans just doing it for politics. And for me, in my opinion, aid is aid. People need the vaccine, they need help. But politics has tied, you know, all this up and it's it's always politics. And then you have, like we discussed, like you said, that we had discussed so many topics. Maybe what we can say is that recently, I think like last week, there was actually some news from my country, Uganda, about debt. Uh, I, th- I don't know whether, Christine, you heard about it, about um, Uganda losing, in quotes, losing its airport to China <laughs> because it had used the airport, Entebbe Airport, as collateral for a loan agreement with China, with a Chinese bank, Exim Bank. Mm. Mm. Yes, yes. So, <laughs> yes, I've heard about it. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. So, so it has, it's been all the rage and, and, and actually in one of my, my classes with my, my uh, uh, supervisor, she brought it, she brought it to my attention and she was asking what I thought about it and what my opinion is. And, and for me, for, for her as a Chinese as a Chinese citizen and as an academic and as someone who has a lot of sway in this sort of like academic circles for her to bring it up to me and to ask for my opinion as an African and as a Ugandan in this context, it shows you that there's there's a certain amount of fear that Chinese people have about the opinion um, Africans have of them. They're very cautious now because it has it's reaching to a stage where Chinese people are, especially now with COVID, they, they got a lot of bad media because of the COVID. And it was incited also by the US that you know China had done some some, I don't know, to spread this virus and all that. So it it it's 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 it, you feel that caution with them and like foreigners and and asking you about your opinion on such on such an issue because it 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 digs at the heart of something that is very you know very sour with Africans you know what they're calling neo neo colonialism but with China like China was going to colonize Africa so she asked me about my opinion and. And at the moment, because it's such a fresh topic, I think the article I read was published, I think, last month, almost like two weeks ago. So you're just at this stage where you're analyzing the facts. The article has a lot of data and it has backing and it has numbers. But then when you look at the fabric of what is being reported and the the connections that are there. What can stand out to you is that it's not one-sided. You know, yeah, China is lending money to an African country, but the terms of this agreement are shady. They weren't transparent. No one knew about what was in the agreement. And the officials who signed it they said that they knew that some of the terms were not good terms. They were, I, I don't remember what they called them. It's, it's like you went into this agreement and you knew that the terms were not shady, but you still went after the money. Like you, 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 you knew that you were offering up a vital piece of your economy to a foreign party 
and you still did not take the time to do your research and to negotiate and and things like that and now the the these ugandan officials are saying that they took i don't know an 11 man team to beijing to negotiate with the bank and and this is after the fact this is after you cannot repay them back like this after such a long time and flags were being raised all the way from beginning of last i mean end of last year there was some noise about it and do you know kenya had the same problem and it's like you don't you don't learn from your neighbor's mistakes or your where they have been and you do you still do it but then you you you, you know that there are so many you you understand that there are many sides to the story and there are many factors, contributory factors. There's the COVID-19, people haven't been traveling, um, the, the construction, because the money was borrowed in order to expand the airport to bring in more revenue to the country, but still COVID-19 has brought the country to a standstill for two years now. So you can't even bring in revenue, enough revenue to pay back. And, and then you have the problem of corruption. You have the problem of overlanding from China's side. They, 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 they have been, they were consistently lending to very many African countries, not just Uganda, like all over the country. So now the, 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 the government, the Chinese government is trying to double down on all this lending because it has realized that it is bad business for for China to to lend to these countries that will probably not pay them back or they are going to make it a political issue so they are reanalyzing who they lend to and how much and who is lending because some of this money is not coming from the government per se it's coming from private banks or maybe it's coming from a province uh, a province in China is is doing its own lending to a certain country. It's not the main government, the central government. So it has to reanalyze its its strategy on lending. So these kinds of stories have they have many facets. <laughs> I okay. would say. Yeah. I think uh, at this point I would like to interject and maybe make a comment because like for mm -hmm. the airport. Um, in Uganda, so first, air travel was very much affected by COVID. So, so the scenario that Uganda found itself in was such that even if uh, they wanted to, like maybe increase the revenue coming through the airport, that was not going to be possible because most places were locked down, flights were affected. In fact, most airlines uh, stopped operating for a while there. You know, uh, the employees were even sent home. It was a crisis. And then for at this point for China to be now, this is the point where they want to like enforce the collateral. I mean, I think it's just a bit bad timing, I think. And it's just a bit uh, maybe not giving Uganda enough. It's a bad time to even try and do this because it's not like it's not like Uganda was sleeping on its hands. It's just that they literally found themselves in this situation where everyone was in. So that if 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 you if it was even Ethiopian Airways that had borrowed this money from China and it was in the middle of COVID, even Ethiopia may have been in the same situation, despite the fact that Ethiopia airline is very much used because that time there wasn't much travel. But the, and then also the other comment I think is interesting is that China hasn't opened its borders. I mean the US has, Europe, Europe did. China, I, I mean, I find it quite interesting because uh, like a lot of even business is comes al around with travel. So like yeah. if, if it's like business meetings or if it's like even uh, like buying, selling goods, you know, shipping cargo, uh, like going to buy stuff for trade for your country. Mm -hmm. So the fact that China hasn't opened its borders and there's no possible indication maybe of a definite time which you can say maybe in February 2022 China will be open so you can plan mm -hmm. yourself around it I think that's also quite another unique interesting thing with China 
So I, I just thought those were interesting comments to make, but you can go on. Uh, definitely. Uh, regarding your first first question, yes, it is. I would agree with you. It is quite a bad time to come um, <laughs> to come knocking at the door to come to 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 be the 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 the, the, the creditor and to 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 ask for your money back. It's such such a bad time. However, you have to give also. You have to say that um, we can't always point a finger and like uh, and 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 put blame indiscriminately, but we also have to l learn from certain things, and uh, and it would be really expected for us to learn from them. First of all, about negotiating. I, I think. There was some, and and I would say that I shouldn't really make an immediate comment right now because it's a, a fresh, fresh. It's only been two two weeks, so I'm guessing the negotiations are still ongoing. But it depends on how good of a negotiator Uganda is, because they need to really be able to negotiate to be able to get the bank to extend, you know, the time time limit on these loans. It's it's not that, you know, they'll immediately come over and take it over and things, but it depends on how good they are at negotiating and 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 extending the time and putting up and saying maybe can we renegotiate or redraft or reconsider this the terms of the loan agreement and and maybe extend it to next year and and there's all also always the danger of this of media because there's already been a lot of bad media with China and its and its debt problems with other countries so you see how that kind of like affects the mentality of the people who are reading about this thing in the news right now everyone is up in arms against China and China is the bad guy they are the person who are who are you know like in a bad position but then you have to also look at other actors in this uganda and most countries that have loans with the imf and world bank they have not been forgiven their debt they are debt with this with the world bank and the imf they have not been forgiven like they still they have been given maybe like uh some debt relief uh for just as this period so that they can recover but they have not been really been forgiven and then you also have to look at the fact that um also in this time which is also not a good thing for the Chinese government because it's letting private actors control the narrative. Because the person who is involved, yes, it's it's it has the government has a lot of stake in the Exim Bank, but still it is mostly private uh, private uh, creditors who give up this money and who are involved in this sort of deals especially with african countries like it's an amalgamation of of different private entities who are putting up money to 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 loan this project so china needs to reanalyze its policy on lending and and controlling lending and how much it lends and and to regularize the process especially of renegotiating of negotiating and 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 maybe um, because it does not want to follow the model of the West, it doesn't want to follow the IMF standards or the Europe, the Paris Club and all those the the normal international standards. It feels like those international standards are are geared towards you know taking advantage of African countries, making them dependent and all that. But still, China has not yet developed its own process so that it does not work in its favor it does it does not really it's it's not standardized they work on a case by case basis and i would i would say that that might 
sometimes work in its favor because not every case is the same. Like the debt in Uganda might, is very different from the debt in Kenya. The circumstances are different and maybe the time is different. It, yeah, it's, it makes it like that. But still having a standardized process helps with transparency and you know what to expect at the end of the procedure. But it's it's not yet standardized, so that that needs to be standardized. Then the other issue we're talking about um, the border issue that is that is something that I also don't understand, because despite China is aiming for zero COVID nineteen, but that is kind of like impossible. Even it does not take a doctor to know that viruses don't easily like fizzle out and die like within a short period of time. There are going to be very, very many variants talking about. So aiming for zero COVID-19 is kind of unrealistic. But still, I think working around that, China has already opened its borders, at least for the for major freight, like the the, the freight and and export and, and logistics and, and shipping for the big major major projects or major major companies they can still trade with china it's just these small time business people who go in and to do for maybe short short periods and that in that category you have a majority of africans so they are the ones who lose out the ones who go for like short um trade um periods of time and they do short small businesses maybe you have to find a container or you have to 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 like export a small bit of things in someone else's stuff so that in that in that way those traders are really 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 affected and that's that's where most africans african traders are most business with Af chinese um trade is with Africa. So I think Africa is really affected in that in that in that light. So I we're just hoping for next year that they do open up. Otherwise it's Africans are going uh, African traders are going to be really, really affected and I don't I don't see how they can do that, do continue with that way for another year. Uh, I think Patricia also I think to just comment again at this point. You see on the FOCAC, you know, like the Forum for Africa-China Cooperation, like those action points that they pass, uh, you hear like mention of like support of Africa trade. Um, and you see like, just as you're saying, uh, African trade is normally on very small scale, like in terms of like, we will not import, if there's a businessman going to China to buy goods, it's not, a quantity that you can compare to like the multinationals that are, you know, outsourcing to China. But then under the FOCAC uh, like action points, uh, there will be an action point to support like Africa trade so that maybe uh, there will be goods made in Africa goods being traded in China, you know, like on a, and therefore helping to build African industry. So, but then as a situation like this, that's when you question what's the commitment on the FOCAC action point. Even if I know they're not binding on, on China or Africa, it's based on friendship, which again is the other thing that you said. Uh, I like like IMF or World Bank where there's some clear standards and clear guidelines, which China thinks are very fluid. So that now um, it could, it could, yeah, it is, it is not, uh, it's, it, over this period it can work, it can work. And I think this also comes to the point where both, Africa and China should like reconsider like how such a fluid relationship is going to work in the long run if China and Africa have a plan to keep cooperating. But I also agree with what you're saying. IMF and World Bank, they are not any better. It's not that they are forgiven loans for Africans. And especially when it comes to issues like if they downgrade you for credit uh, ratings, I mean, because you defaulted, it really puts you on a bad on a bad light. So they may not take your airport, but they can cripple your economy for the next several, you know? Yeah, anyway, uh, yeah, you can go on. 
it's lack of of that commitment i think with china you need to have that that solid it's and that solid commitment and that that transparency and you have these rules these guiding principles and china will always say that they are experimenting like they are in in a period where they are learning you know they are just learning they are new to the field so they they cannot put down solid roots and they cannot commit when they're just learning but still even in that position there's there's a lot can that can be lost in that period and you still need guidelines you still need guidelines for 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 africans and also for for chinese traders as well you you need to know that they cannot step out of they cannot cross a certain line so if you're saying um we are going to uh, offer you know better trading terms to, or maybe I don't, i'm not really conversant with, with with trading language but if you're saying that we are going to offer origin rules of origin on certain goods we are, we will say that goods coming from africa receive these kinds of taxes or things like this or maybe we 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 have a special landing site for african trading or those sorts of commitments you 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 put them on paper and then you follow them up with an action plan and then you follow them up with policy and you follow that up with with, with transparency and giving an accountability to people to see that it's actually being followed through so that way you've drawn a line you're like this is the line and you walk here you do this you follow this procedure and we have regularized it that there are certain um rules and things so that if anyone breaks these terms they can you know they can they they have someone to hold accountable for 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 this and this so in, in that sense it's not working and and before africa was gaining from china africa exports so china would hold exports in 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 these um prominent places so they would take their goods to these these cities or these and then sell their product to companies or maybe as for collaboration or uh, things like that but because of covid-19 they haven't been really exposed that the, the, there's there's not been that kind of of publicity for african goods with chinese the, the chinese market so it's it's not really benefiting except for maybe chinese people who are still some of them are still really like working um in 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 african countries and for them it 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 hasn't really affected them in in any way but for african people who cannot go to china it, it does affect their their market in 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 china and it, it's it's not an a balanced relationship in any way it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't balance out because they can come here but african traders can't go so how does that balance out <laughs> <laughs> yeah patricia and i can confirm that like, the roads that are being constructed like within kenya for instance the construction is still going on uh with chinese people here so uh, you see work is still going on here and i'm sure like if they are good uh or maybe like steel uh or whatever other metals need to be imported into the country to help with the construction the flow is seamless but i as a person wanting to go to china to i don't know do my own small business i'm not allowed to so and then also you see even even as much as i and i know china uh, like to use that phrase i think crossing the river by one stone at a time or something so that they are, it's a test it's a trial but you see sometimes you don't have to reinvent the wheel so for instance if because china then they feel like they need to come up with a clean piece of paper and on that paper they try and then come up with a end product but you see things like what you just mentioned like if like it's a free trade zone you're told like all goods coming from africa will go to like will not have this duty in china i mean you really don't need to invent how that works 
there are rules already within how such systems work. You just need to look for that those that uh, work for Africa and commit to them. But I think total and complete lack of commitment is not a trial. It's just lack of commitment to like um, like the, giving the support that you say you want to give. But uh, Patricia, we were aiming at 30 minutes and I think we are there. So I will, yeah, I will let you though uh, give your closing remarks in summary and then we will end here. We possibly should have a, another short brief discussion to touch on uh, things, especially like the Uganda airport, once more information is out in the, in the public. Yeah. It's it's been first of all really nice to be to be back and to to discuss. I, there's there's so much to discuss. Like there's there's really so much to discuss, and I'm looking forward to more discussions. But I think to just sum up, it's 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 as as someone who is who is dedicated to who has found themselves dedicated to researching China Africa relations it's it's always good to know that you have to look at the bigger picture when you open a news article and it's talking about china you you have to consider all the all the facts and not to just say that you know this is happening or that 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 person is that the, 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 this country is taking over or or the us is a bad guy they're bullying china or China is the bad person that's trying to colonize Africa. Because all these things are quite, they, they can happen like in some imagined future, I don't know, somewhere. But right now it's not a reality. I think what we need to concentrate on is the African front. Because we always are saying this one is not treating us fairly or we're not at equal footing, but we have to flex our African muscle. We have to learn to stand on our own and to to fight for Africans because those countries are not going to fight for you. China might promise it, but they will only reach a certain point and then they they are taking back what is due to them, what they feel like is due to them. And we have already been here. We have already been exploited by, by the US and by colonialism and so Africans need to flex their muscles. We need to stand up for ourselves and you need to demand what's due to you. So you, we, we need to put up some terms. We, we need to draw some lines. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I can say as a closing remark. It's what we always say here. <laughs> we need to learn how to be self-reliant and to negotiate better. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Patricia, for those comments. Yeah, it always seems like at the end of our talk, uh, there's just one resounding phrase that you need as Africans not to say, help us, we are helpless, and point to the person who's bullying you. At some point, you actually need to stand up and fight for yourself. Like this scenario with China, I mean, someone should just look at it just as we have and see like the construction and everything. Chinese people are still working in, in African countries. Well, Africans uh, who had businesses in China, for instance, and now had to leave because of COVID, they can't go back. Or people who are planning maybe to expand on that side, uh, they can't go back. And then you ask, then how are we benefiting in this? And then maybe uh, ask for more solid terms of trade. Uh, but Patricia, it's always a pleasure. And everyone who listens to this, uh, it was nice to have this talk and have you listen. If you have any thoughts, just share them on uh, our platforms. We will respond to them. And also think of ways, you know, that as a person within Africa, you can, uh, you know, uplift uh, your economy and you can share such thoughts and influence policies in your country. Uh, for now, it's uh, goodbye and we will do this again uh, next time. Thank you.